Hi everyone, um, I'm Bob the Drag Queen. I'm Pepperman. And we're having a conversation today that has some really, um, uh, can have some very triggering language. We do discuss uh, unaliving, we discuss uh, sexual assault, and um, violence, violence, and specifically violence toward uh, trans people. Um, so just, this is your warning, please take care of yourself. And if that's too much for you, then we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Yeah. Uh, please share it to all your friends. Yeah. We want everybody to watch it. Yeah. And um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and we're here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Um, we're back again to have another uh, conversation, another little mm -hmm. chat. Um, as you all know, me and Pep have a lot of opinions. We love to talk. And we love to share them. Um, this is our second of our little monthly conversations. And uh, thank you all for joining us again. Uh, happy July. Happy July. Well, it's pretty much, it's August. It'll be August. Have you seen, oh, I mean, we didn't put this on the docket yet, but also, do you know about what Leslie Jones is going through right now? No, Leslie, what's going on with Leslie Jones? So Leslie Jones posted online being like, hey, everyone, um, you know, I don't feel like saying happy 4th of July because oh, it yes. feels like we're going backwards. It feels like, if anything, it, like it feels like... Um, like we're going back to uh, slavery. Uh huh. So then this uh, this other lady decided to respond to that with just the most like you can't oh. use the screen. But it's not that word. To do mine like does. Excuse me. Mine does. Mine is a touch screen. Oh, mine is not. But um. So basically, this woman decided to uh, post a video being really. Uh, colorist and mean and um, rude toward Leslie Jones, saying, that she, saying that she looked like Grape Ape, saying that uh, she looked like that if she was, if we were to still uh, have slavery, she'd be outside working with the oxen. She looks like a man. And it's a Black woman. And this is, this is exactly the type of anti, this is, the, I believe that this is exactly the type of behavior and treatment that affects cisgender women, black black cisgender women, that spurs from the anti-trans rhetoric. Calling a woman a man, the first thing you think of is someone talking about someone who's transgender. But really, this does happen to black women. We we mentioned women, it before to black women. cis women. Yeah, it does happen. And you know, calling, looking at black women's bodies that are varied. There's all obviously different types of bodies. Um, but for some reason, calling any, I guess, any cis woman who's, who's who's tall, who might have broader shoulders or a deeper voice or larger hands or whatever they have, subjects them, you know, makes them vulnerable to being called a man. And I think that I, I what I find really interesting is this no, this um, this desire to uh, it, it happens a lot with black people to <laughs> masculinize women or to feminize men against their will is an attempt to uh, belittle them and take away mm -hmm. their credibility um, and take away uh, their dignity. Um, There's a whole video that I watched on that that I can't find right now. So we'll, we'll talk about it on another time because it's way deeper. Mm -hmm. But um, but it, but there's, there's, a, there's been some people who really analyzed that notion of particularly the... Um, that at the same time, sexualizing and also masculinizing black women to demean them, you know, like simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And then how that connects to black men and what people talk about and think about. There's a whole video that I watched about. It. I'll share it with you. It's really That's good. why I'm so intrigued by uh, black men and women who uh, intentionally choose to masculinize or feminize themselves. And then mm. um, people, that is really subversive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and really turns it on his, on his head. So if someone someone calls me girly, I'm like, do you think I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be effective because I've spent a lot of time feminizing myself. You know what I mean? But some people still look at it as if it's some sort of a detriment or, or like a, or, or, or a negative. Uh, there was something that like in the, in, when I was growing up in music and hip hop, if you were a female rapper, um, that the ladies who were doing, for the most part, doing hip hop, the, at least the very successful ones, were really like just had this like urban edge to them mm -hmm. that wasn't wearing like that didn't seem like it was doing nail polishes and manicures. You and like, makeup. like the brat? 
and uh, mm -hmm. Missy Elliott and I mean, well, that uh, MC actually, Light. Even prior to that, definitely MC. I'm talking about in the, actually. I'm talking about the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, oh, MC Salt and Pepper, so, yeah, MC Light. Light. Queen Latifah. I mean, these are all like gorgeous women, mm -hmm. but they weren't, you know, glam when they were doing their their performances and their videos. They were just like extremely natural, and there was something. Well, a lot of those, some of those women are queer, which is probably a big part of like like you know. They're, they're I think under the un, uh, that is a, a deeper level of why they might not have been as glam. Mm -hmm. Then in the late nineties, they all glam, but like I think one of the turning points for that, a lot of it was TLC uh, was early TLC. Um, in the early 90s, uh, even on, like, they had their song Hat to the Back, which was like, you know, I'm just, like, going to wear my jeans mm -hmm. low and and no makeup and I don't do all this stuff. And then, you know, their next album, um, they were still very urban, but, like, the, the um, Crazy Sexy Cool, they had, they definitely had, like, the oh, makeup they, yeah, on. They were definitely they were in bikinis, glammed up, They glammed it up. And I think that the was... The low pants. Yeah, the, all of that. I think that was really... Um, helpful in bringing some glam to like the world of women and hip hop. Women and, hip -hop. Um, and now we have, and then we have like folks like Little Kim who's wearing like a wig and furs. And nails. I think Kim really you know, is Kim one really who ushered put, in like, the hyper femininity in terms yeah. of hip hop and paved yeah. the way for Nicki Minaj's and uh, Megan Thee Stallions mm -hmm. and uh, Saweeties. But there was something about be, being a, a like quote, girly girl, like hyper glam, very feminine uh, in terms of the stuff that you were doing, that seemed, uh, that, I think the, the stigma was that it was weak and that it wasn't as strong. And these women in hip hop really had to, you know, over outperform a lot of the men that they were around just to get a little bit of the pay, a little bit of the notoriety and things like that. And so I think that's probably why they were like, I'm just going to be hard yeah. and a warrior. You know, so 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 you know a lot a lot of uh, black TikTok and black Twitter has come to defend Leslie Jones um, mm -hmm. against this woman. This it was really uh, was really really sad to see. This this is a um a black woman who doesn't not look like Leslie Jones. Like she she is everything that she like made fun of Leslie Jones for is a characteristic that she possesses as well. She's tall. She's dark skin. Um, and she's like has all and she's just saying all this stuff. And then people are bringing up that she has like these like these four daughters who also all look like they could relate to Leslie Jones. And they're like, what do you think it says to your daughters when they see you online saying all this stuff about this woman? Because they didn't, they didn't attack Leslie Jones' politics. She just spent two to three minutes just attacking her physically. physically. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, that's we see that happening with, I mean, there was this other story that was um, happened earlier in the summer where uh, there was a kids at a playground I didn't see the whole thing, but there was kids playing in a playground and one of the kids might have um, accidentally pushed the other or something like that. A, a larger kid who's black came in physical contact with a younger white kid who's smaller. And that was just like their quick moment. And then the father was really upset and was like, how dare you attack my kid? And he he was yelling at the kid. So then the the the, the black kid's mother came in and was like, please do not yell at my child. Da, 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 da. Oh, I saw that. You saw that. And then he immediately was just attacking her, calling her, like, you know, basically saying that she's not sexual, that she's not sexy. Was this the this, one in Florida? And then that he was like, going to bust her jaw. Yeah, break your jaw and all that. Yeah, he's going to do all this. He threatened her physically. He basically called her a slut at the same time that he said that she's not sexy and no man would ever want to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I'm using very polite language for the stuff that he said. And, yeah, polite language <laughs> like slut. <laughs> and then... Um, and and so and then threaten her with physical and then threaten violence. Her with physical violence. And so just that I think that's the best way, that, not the best way, but that's a a way that these folks see that they can discredit someone is obviously just talk about their physicality. Yeah. Don't even talk about don't even dress what they said. Well, maybe it's, maybe what it boiled down to is the woman didn't have a lot of uh, merit in her critiques of Leslie Jones's rhetoric. Was she, was she upset that that Leslie Jones was saying that she wasn't enthusiastic about? Celebrating Fourth of July. Yeah, she was like, "Where else in America?" What, what, what the woman said was, I, "I think Leslie untweeted the video, but she basically was saying, where else but in America can you, you look like grape ape and still be famous or whatever?'" That was, um, and that was the woman's whole. This is the woman. That's the woman there. That's the woman's whole bit was that she was like, "You're ugly," and 
So did she say it to Leslie Jones, or did she say it about Leslie Jones? It's about Jones Leslie Jones uh, okay. on, on a different platform. This this other guy um, who has a show. Hold on. There will be no in Leslie Jones's looks. Uh Where else, if not America, can you resemble Great Ape and have the success that Leslie Jones has had? If we went so that's, back to that's slavery, just like and it was just a bunch of that for a hot minute. Um, and I, I don't know the name of the guy. But who, what is that guy saying about her looks? Did he, did he the, say, the, let's the, talk about her looks? No, the guy was basically setting this woman up to talk about Les Jones. He goes, I can't believe Les Jones says this, and I'm not even going to talk about her looks. So he up front, he was like, I'm not even going to talk about this woman's looks at all. Um, and Why then, is talking about her looks at, at well, not saying you're not going to come on her looks is is a huge. His name is Jason Whitlock. So Jason Whitlock is a conservative who has well, this surprise. who has this show, and he by obviously by setting up and saying I'm not going to talk about your looks is a way of prompting this other woman because obviously he knew what she was going to say. He go to her to talk, talk about talk about Leslie Jones's look, and yeah. she had this like prepared monologue, and she really she really thought she ate. She was like I. She was like she act like she ate down when she said this thing, but but um it, and it was it, it her is, point is. That you know, America is great because because people who look different can yeah can be successful. She also has the false the this false idea that she's pushing out, which is that only in America can you be deemed not uh, conventionally attractive and make it, which is just one completely that's, that's, false. America definitely does operate on a spirit. If you look better, you would be more successful. But e but even on top of <laughs> even on top of that, in America, you can not look uh, particularly. You, you can't fit the typical beauty standard and look nice. But also, there are other countries in the world where you can also not fit the stereotypical beauty standard and be successful. It's another red herring. It's, 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 another it's, red it's herring. the idea when they say stuff like only America is the only country in the world where you can like be successful. And they, they say that even though it's not true, even though we all know it's not true, there are other places in the world where you can um, garner success and uh, participate in, you know, freedom. But, they, but we, we have to uphold this idea that in America, this is, this is the freest place in the world. No place has ever been as free as America is. Well, there's obviously some great things about the country. There's some things that we believe that we can do here that we can't do other places. Uh, I think a lot more, a lot of that has to do more with the spirit of a lot of people who have been, um, whether they've had a struggle and, and persevered or they're resilient and they're encouraged or whatever, obviously having opportunity is good. You know, I would like to think that those same people and had they lived in another country would still have the passion for wanting to be, become successful or become a business person or a singer. We don't really know because we can't go back in time and put somebody in a new place, but you know, it, it does. It doesn't negate the fact that there are some issues, some serious problems with some of the stuff that is happening currently in this country and has happened historically in this yeah. country. And so, I would say that America is not a great place because someone who looks like Leslie Jones can do that. I think Leslie, it's Leslie Jones successful in spite of the fact that America still has issues with race and racism, issues with. Uh, misogyny and the and you know uh, sexism and and I think that you know it is it's great that someone in this country can overcome some of those things, but it is still a problem that affects most of the people because if Leslie wasn't as successful as she is in the way that she became, which is rare and unique, then she would there's a good chance that she would have the same issues, but but maybe maybe even to a greater degree if she was. Just trying to get a job at such and such Same a place. Same issues with yeah. less access. Yeah, le less access. And, you know, but also, it, and the last thing I'll say about this whole situation is like it, it really, uh, really en enhances this idea that I know for sure, which is that it lets you think that uh, people like Leslie Jones. We hear it so much. I, I grew up hearing that people like Leslie Jones were ugly. Whoopi Goldberg. I remember growing up in like a big part of the media was like saying that Whoopi Goldberg was ugly. It was in movies, it was in jokes, comedians were saying it. And I think a big part of it branched from the line in the movie, you show is ugly. Um, mm -hmm. And then she played Miss Celia character who was written as a person who was not conventionally attractive. And I grew up my whole life thinking Whoopi Goldberg is ugly. I also grew up my thinking I look like Whoopi Goldberg. Therefore, by the transitive property, I must be ugly. You know what I mean? Um, but then I remember as an adult going back and looking at pictures of Whoopi Goldberg and thinking to myself, she was never ugly. But I let them convince me that she was ugly and that let me convince myself that I was ugly and the people around me who looked like Whoopi Goldberg were also quite ugly. 
So okay, there. So in the midst of in the midst of all of this um, Roe v. Wade stuff, there's been some rhetoric that uh, I think people don't realize is exclusionary in their attempts to overturn Roe v. Wade. In their terms, talking about like women's rights, women's rights, women's rights, which also excludes a lot of people who uh, who have wombs that uh, can give birth to them, don't identify as women. Um, and excluding them from this conversation. And in the midst of this, Beth Midler tweeted out something, which I think she, her her plan was to tweet something very um, supportive and trying to like boost morale. Um, and uh, what she tweeted out was, women of the world, we are being stripped of our rights over our bodies, our lives, and even our name. They don't call us women anymore. They call us birthing people or menstruators and even people with vaginas. Don't let them erase you. Every human on earth owes you. And I I think that sometimes people, they get so zealous in in the terms of their, their fight for reproductive rights, mm -hmm. they forget that not everyone with reproductive rights is a woman, and not everyone who's a woman is a part of the reproductive rights conversation. Does that make any sense? Of course it does. Yeah. And... It seems like Beth Midler has been edumacated and um, changed up her tone a little bit since that uh, came out. I mean, not exactly. I mean, her tone was still very, you know, it, it, it was a little defiant, you know, which is fine. She clearly didn't like that she was, it seemed as though she didn't like or appreciate the fact that she had been corrected or that people were, were, were stepping in to inform her. I don't know what a private conversation she may have had, but her response, her tweet response was basically, how dare you all accuse me of being transphobic? I have been here for everyone, which she has. She has been there for the gay community primarily over the years, for decades. I mean, you know, it was really interesting. I did a, a piece recently um, that focused on what was happening uh, in 1970, early 70s, when Sylvia Rivera famously was down in Washington Square Park uh, at, a, at a rally uh, for gay folks. And, you know, they were booing her off the stage. She was invited to speak, Sylvia Rivera. Mm -hmm. They said, actually, you can't get up there. They were blocking her from the stage when she got down there. And then she, I guess she had to fight her way on the stage. And so when she eventually got up on the stage, she was like, you know, how she was upset. How dare you all? You know, I'm working really hard for the community. I'm trying to help the community, which helps all of you. And you all are treating me this way. There's a whole video that people should go out and watch um, with Sylvia Rivera, uh, who is one of the godmothers of the current gay liberation movement. Um, and it's really a, a moving video. Uh, Beth Miller was apparently listening to that on the radio and then called her young accompanist, Barry Manilow, to go down and sing, uh, to go down and first say, hey, stop treating each other poorly. You all need to treat each other with love and respect, and here's a song. And so she's saying, you got to have friends, which was like, that was that big moment. Mm -hmm. But since then, that was, you know, almost nearly 45 years ago, almost 50 years ago, um, you know, the, a lot has changed. And unfortunately, when we talk about the functions of people's bodies, we can't general, it's generalizing does leave out some people. And it really does, I think it comes down to how inclusive do you want to be with what you're, with what you're about to say? If you're talking to all the people, how inclusive do you want people to, how inclusive do you want to be? How much do you want to pe people to feel included? And so talking about uh, abortion and reproductive justice, we should talk about it through an LGBTQ lens issue as well. Ab abortion is not a, you know, an issue that only applies to people who are Democrat or people who are registered as Republicans. This is to anybody who can give birth and anyone who can get pregnant and anyone who may not want to give birth and get pregnant, but is. And that includes trans people, all types of queer people, trans men, you know, everyone. And even thinking of it in a larger issue, not just the people who actually have, you know, what we would call a womb and can give birth. Um, you know, trans women are also a part of the reproductive conversation as well. There are trans women who who do, can and do, you know, use their DNA 
to help in the, you know, fertilize an egg mm -hmm. and parent, you know, and there's trans women who want to do those things. There's many who can't and a lot, probably a lot more who don't. Um, but I'm just saying that, you know, we need to think of these issues in a way that benefits everybody. That's my thinking. But I know that there's a lot of people who want to be really, 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 really what I would call reductive and really reduce everything down to the black and white. But isn't there a saying that we know that everything's not always black and white? Yeah, I, I think that what they're trying, I'm assuming, because I'm not one of those folks, but I used to be, I used to be a person who would just say, well, this is a women's rights issue because what I would probably think to myself was, I'm thinking, I'm trying to put myself back in that mindset. I would probably think to myself, what I mean is, it's mostly a women's rights issue. Mm -hmm. but, and it still the, is a women's but, right issue. It's not just only a women's rights no, issue. No, but what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is like, what I would be thinking to myself was, this is mostly a women's rights issue. And, but you would say it's a but, women's But I would say women's, right, women's rights. And if someone and if someone were to say, what about trans, I'd say, well, yeah, 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 them too. But I would be using some verbiage that would not be quite um, inclusive. inclusive. And I think because I know, you know, obviously, I obviously know trans men, clearly. I mean, my, my partner's a trans man. Um, and he can't get pregnant, but um, that's that's not the point of the conversation. Uh, when I met him, he could, you know what I mean? And, I, and I, I've just become more sensitive to rhetoric like that because I know how exclusionary it can be. Mm -hmm. um, so... But also, if you think back to, I mean, the great saying, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if one person loses, I mean, I think that um, Judge Clarence Thomas has proven that, that if one person, if, 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 if this group can lose their rights, then we're going to be visiting these people next, and then these people next, and then these people next. Um, it, it, it's that physical example. That this is like this here. this group of people can lose their rights, and then this this group of people, because they're in close in proximity, they can lose their rights too. There's and then these two, people are close fingers. to these people, and they can get it. And even though these people are far from these okay, people, Bob is fingering. They can get no. This is fingering, and this is stroking. Um, this is not how fingering works. Well, not I mean. This is, hey. this, this is the whatever is okay, getting fingers okay. doing all the work. Children are going to watch a video. <laughs> I didn't tell these kids to watch this video. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that is, um, so I, and I think that these people, someone like Bette Midler, who has been an advocate for rights for queer people, and I think it's fair to say that Bette Midler has been, has been an advocate for rights for, for lots of queer people for a long time. Yeah, because that's of, true. And, and, and I, I, true. I don't think it's fair to reduce her down to being just being there for gay men. I think she's done a lot of rights for a lot of stuff for people over the years. Um, I don't. She's think, I, I don't, really outspoken and at I don't least think, an, an outspoken advocate. Yeah, I don't. I mean, Bette Midler's in her seventies. Bette Midler was born in her in the forties. I don't even know. I, I probably can't even begin to name all the stuff Bette Midler has done that has affected. Uh, it's true. I, I I also don't want to label her as someone who is a trans a transphobe. I don't usually call people a anything, but mm -hmm. um, but I do think that she has had some time to understand that this issue, if you've been listening, then it is not that difficult to grasp that there are people who can get pregnant yeah. who don't identify as women. But I think, and I think what I was getting at is like, I think that I'm trying to think from Bette Midler's perspective, perspective is when you are someone who has been so vocally in, in support of the queer community for so long, and then it feels like they're all attacking you. And she's like, what? not been here it's true but, but that doesn't mean but that does that still doesn't mean that you can't get it wrong every yeah. once in a while clearly you know and i think part of partially maybe part of the reason that people are attacking her i mean you know uh, people will respond to anything on social media but i think part of the at least in my perspective my i was a little shocked and surprised to see her coming out with this kind of language because she was has been such an ally and so i felt a little bit sense of betrayal and that was how i was offended um because it felt like it was like oh this is someone who's family who's saying this to us and what's going on i think you know? so a lot of times when people think about trans people they often just do not think about trans men like when they when they hear trans they they, they only think about trans women they don't think about anyone non-binary they don't think about they don't think about, they usually, they often don't think about people who are assigned female at birth, and they are usually just thinking about trans women or people who are assigned male at birth. That is the, what their brain goes straight to. And the only two people that those groups apply to 
Um, like, and, and they are, and, and based on what the rhetoric that I hear people say is very late transitioning trans women who in their minds look in the minds of the people criticizing say that they just look like men in a wig. And these are late transitioning trans women who they're also accusing them of being rapists and lecherous and trying to go around and be sexual predators and, or young babies who are who who are ha who are being snatched out of their homes and forced to have you know their genitalia their genitalia altered by doctors and those two things are not the case when it comes to trans women either. I'm just saying that's the lens that yeah. they are willing to. They they don't think of who trans people say they are, who trans people actually are. They really are just many of the people who uh, who are seem to be using these examples. The examples that they use are of victims, you know, children who are victims of some type of a, an, an effort to change all children's genitalia against their will at a very young age, or... Well, now, now you bring up the, the movie that we watched. Exactly. Well, so, 